Does our own galaxy stay in one place or are we moving at the same pace of the expanding universe? Um, so the idea of a place, um, you know, uh, the, uh, a location in space is a Newtonian idea. Um, the, the idea of absolute space, which does not exist in Einstein's theory for a start. So um, our galaxy is free falling through the universe almost. So it rides with the expansion of the universe. And so, so you, you, can't, you can't say, well, the galaxy is moving, right? So you, we could define our galaxy as standing still. The, there is a, a, a slight caveat, which is it's part of a collection of galaxies, uh, of which the Andromeda galaxy is one. So, so there is a, 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 a motion of the Andromeda galaxy and the Milky Way towards each other. They, what's called gravitationally bound, which um, also overcomes the expansion of the universe. So, but if you take a galaxy that's not bound to any other galaxies, it rides with the what's called the Hubble flow or the Hubble expansion of the universe. And so, um, and, and so those things you consider to be, to be at rest. So it, we're moving, you see, moving is a thing. You have to say moving relative to what? And um, uh, ultimately, you, you can, I mean, we, we could get deeper. You, you, can, you can say that things have a motion relative to cosmic microwave background radiation. Um, and uh, so you could say, is it moving relative to that? Um, but yeah. <laughs> Where do all the teaspoons go? Where do all the teaspoons go? Um, it, that's a more interesting question. If you say, what would happen if I threw all the teaspoons into a black hole? Um, then we think, ultimately, that the, the information that is the teaspoon, right? So the, the, the teaspoon itself could be reconstructed in the Hawking radiation in the far future as the black hole evaporates away. The information in the teaspoon only starts coming out about halfway through the black hole's life, actually. It's something called the page time, roughly speaking, halfway through the life of the black hole. A big black hole, these things have lifetimes, by the way, 10 to the power 100 years or more, right? So we're talking about one with 100 noughts after it, way longer than the current age of the universe. And the universe hasn't even begun on that time scale, really. But, um, but the, you know, just a tiny fraction of time. But in the far distant future, the, the essence of the teaspoon, the information it carries would come out in the Hawking radiation encoded in an interesting way. So you could reconstruct the fact that there was a teaspoon in principle, although not in practice, um, because you'd need, well, you need to be almost omnipotent. You'd have to have enormous quantum computers and it's, it's not going to happen. But that's the more interesting. So, so, so I would say that the interesting question is, what, what I would say is that wherever they've gone, even if you throw them into a black hole, then given perfect knowledge, given knowledge of the universe and the state of the universe now, you could reconstruct where they were. Some information is not destroyed. The universe is deterministic as far as we can tell, even in black holes. So, um, so you know, that that's my answer to you the wherever they've gone the information about them is still there if you look hard enough professor brian cox horizons a 21st century space odyssey live on stage using state-of-the-art led screen technology theaters and arenas will be filled with images of faraway galaxies alien worlds supermassive black holes and a time before the big bang 